Do you believe in ghosts? By the end of this video, you will. <laughs>《Month at the Computer》where we're celebrating the Halloween spirit. Yeah, I've been seeing ghosts and ghouls all over the place lately. Yeah, now that you mentioned they seem to be everywhere. At the cemetery, mm -hmm. under your bed, your teacher at school could even be a witch. I even think I've heard something about up above. In heaven? No, none of that BS. We're scientists here. I'm talking about Ghost Galaxy. The Disneyland ride? No, no, no. I'm talking about the 2008 game Dead Space. Oh, Houston, got a problem. Let's dismember some necromorphs at the computer. Welcome to Dead Space by Visceral. This came out in 2008. I guess this game had a lot of acclaim when it came out, but to me it was kind of underrated because I never really played this game until later. Bruce is the one who kind of turned me on. Bruce is the one playing it. I This is one of my favorite games of the last generation and one of my favorite horror games ever. And our partner is calling us to ask us to meet him. When were you going to tell us about the artifact, Hammond? I think this is a good point uh, to pull out right now is um, everything like one thing I love about this game is how immersive it is every cutscene everything happens on a HUD yeah and there's like no heads up display everything like all the information is conveyed on the character and conveyed in world mm -hmm. and like a lot of games do that nowadays but for 2008 not yeah. many games achieved it and when you first saw this game is like really really crazy it's really stripped down too. I mean like the thing I love is your suit how it upgrades It's like you're seeing your health on on you know the on your spine which is such a rad concept concept and idea mm -hmm. and even like you there's a button just to like pre like uh, fill your health without even going to the menu yeah. there's a button to fill up your stasis without going to the menu again just total immersion also I love these posters so much I love the art design. yeah and seeing like the, the gun ammo flick up so like after Resident Evil 4 came out there was like a few cheap knockoffs like cold fear um, but Dead Space was the first one that really like got it right but also just like totally new <clears throat> so I mean like clearly really inspired by alien and a lot of other like sci-fi horror films this game, like, what's exactly the setting? You're like a miner who goes onto like a a, 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 yes. a moon and so, it's haunted or whatever. No, not that is Dead Space Three. Please do not get these confused. Okay. Um, that's the premise of Dead Space One is you are part of a uh, mining team, and there is a. Uh, so it's like Minecraft. Yeah, basically Minecraft in space. Um, but there is a stress call from the Ishimura, which is a giant like mining ship that mines like uh, planets for resources. You get a call there, and uh, turns out your wife is on the ship as uh, well. Okay, and your wife died a long time ago, right? Uh, or no? No, I, don't know. I was thinking that's Silent Hill shit. I don't no, know. no, your wife's not dead, and okay. so you uh, you get a call from the the ship, mm -hmm. and you end up going on the ship, and everything's gone to chaos. There's these necromorphs on there, yeah. and you don't know what they are. And then in the midway through chapter two, you get a call from your wife saying like, "Hey, I'm still on the ship. Okay. Please find me." And so your your task is with just getting off the ship because your plane is wrecked mm -hmm. and uh, finding your missing wife and trying to figure out what is going on. So again, like the reason I love Dead Space 1 more than like 2 and 3 is like, again, 2 and 3 got a little bit more like more bombastic and like in your face. Yeah. Dead Space 1, the premise is so simple. You get stranded on this ship. It's like the art design is great. <laughs> And you're just trying to figure out what's going on. It's very subtle. Yeah. It's very creepy. You're left to a, a lot of things are left up to the imagination. Whereas like Dead Space two and three like spell out a lot of things, mm -hmm. and I feel like they lose a lot of like that magic. They lose a lot of that tension because of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I played I played all the Dead Space. We can talk about more a little bit later. But yeah, Dead Space three is so dumb. But like the first Dead Space, I was just really surprised by. It. Like it's it's really good and like one of my favorite games is half-life and again i think tying back to the no heads up display thing is like a lot of the story cutscenes all that stuff is just done through yep. like in game and that was something that half-life pioneers and again just like with resident Evil 4 you're getting these pickups health items you have limited inventory you're getting points you can upgrade your weapons yep you can upgrade your suit you can upgrade your health all these little mechanics that are like, okay, immediately, I'm sold, I'm in. Well, even like what we're looking at right now, even though this game's a little dated, the atmosphere is so great. Yeah. Like, this scene is really cool. Like, it just feels very lived in. It feels very real. Mm -hmm. it's, and like that kind of retro future look. Yeah, because it's like, it's sci-fi, but everything isn't like super white and sleek. It's it's just very much like 70s alien. It's very yeah. crusty and just like, okay, okay, it's the future, but we're still working. This is still, we're still, you know, it's just like, like we're even, still corporate slaves. Even your suit isn't flashy or fun. Yeah. It's a mining yeah, suit. Yeah, it's a worker, yeah. yeah big and this guy this is the first time us meeting this dude on the ship we crash here with him and he's just giving us a heads up of what's happening mm -hmm. and then we're gonna have to figure out what's going on 
But I wanted to play this uh, level in particular because it has one of my favorite areas in the game. Oh, that's a that's an alien launching into space. Yeah, we haven't seen. I mean, this is chapter four, so you've played through it a bit. But yeah, we haven't seen the aliens yet. Mm -hmm. But I love this chapter just for. Uh, this plaza we're about to head up to right here. And what's kind of like the progression with the story? Because isn't it even like isn't it like you're, you 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 get into like a uh, almost like a subway and you're going through the station? There's like different levels or something like that. Yeah, there's a train cart that takes you from level to level because the Ishimura is so big. Okay. So a lot of people can a lot of people kind of talk down on like games that like segment its level because it feels very gamey. Yeah. You know. Oh. Hell yeah. I forgot I forgot this happens right here. Oh big boy. Do you have a gun? Yeah yeah. Shoot it. So here's a trick of Big Boy. If you go on the stairs, he runs away. So <laughs> this is, that, is some like Resident Evil yeah. Four cheater stuff. This is how this is how you fight Big Boy. You're playing this on medium, but you have played the game on. Oh, that's another element I completely forgot. You yeah. can do stasis, right? You can slow enemies down. Yeah, the combat in this game has a lot of variety to it because you have stasis, you have uh, telekinesis as well, so you can pick up objects and yeah. throw them at people. Yeah, there's a really cool physics engine in this game. Uh, and so again, it's like kind of Resident Evil Four, where it layers a lot of mechanics on top of each other. And so it's never like dry and boring. Hell yeah. Oh, we have to shoot the back of its legs. Yeah, so that's one thing that's really cool with the, the combat is like this is a bigger guy, but even like the smaller like necromorphs is you have this special laser gun that you can like, you can use stasis and then you can shoot off the limbs one mm -hmm. by one. Like you can really like have fun with taking down your enemies. Again, like all games up to this point, like we're so used to like doing headshots, body shots, but re like Dead Space is one of those games that like makes you rethink combat a little bit. Mm -hmm. In the sense that, like, you have to approach combat in a totally different way. Yeah. If you do headshots or body shots, it's gonna take you forever. Yeah, and to again, kill you have people. this extra layer of like magic abilities, which like Mass Effect did well too. But here you have this like action survival horror element too. You can slow enemies down. You can pick. Oh yeah, one thing I love, you can find like javelins or spikes yeah. and chuck them through enemies, and then they get impaled, and then you have to shoot them. Well, also, um, you can even like cut off enemies' limbs and then pick them up and throw them at Hell people. Hell yeah! And because they're like so sharp, you can kill enemies with them. That's awesome. And then there's also under other uh, weapons like flamethrowers. Like, what's like the weapon variety like in this game? Weapon variety, like uh, it's all like quote unquote like mining tools and stuff like that. But it's pretty much like you got a pistol, you got a machine gun, you have a uh, a gun that pushes people away from you. Okay, like a force field. Yeah, like, kind of like a gun. force push. Yeah. And then you have a line gun, which shoots like a big line of energy out. Uh, and you have a flamethrower as well. Honestly, the best weapon in the game is the one I'm using right now. Yeah, and you can upgrade all these guns, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. How long does it take to kill Big Boy? Should be. I don't know. I don't understand why his legs aren't coming off. Oh, his man. legs should come off anytime. I might use a different gun. Yeah, switch it up. Let's see. Come on, Big Boy. So this is a machine gun? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Again, these are. They all context these in the world as like, these are mining tools and Isaac knows how to use these, but like, they're straight up guns, you know? I also appreciate the cute. His name is Isaac and like all sci fi stuff like Isaac has Okay. Dorky shit like that. So when he goes down like this, ooh. What you gotta come here. Explode? Oh yeah, you can stomp enemies when they come down too. Alright, I think he lost a limb. Yep, he lost a limb. Okay. You guys do that. Yeah, look at him crawl around now. Hell yeah. Oops. What the hell was that? That was an alternative fire. If you hold down R2, you okay. can do an alt fire. On yeah, all so the guns weapons. have different like modes of firing. Mm -hmm. There we go. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it looks Oh, that's yeah, so cool. Yeah, just decembering him. There we go. What's he drop? I think he drops a semiconductor. Oh, he just oh, drops credits. credits. Yeah, just like Resident Evil 4, getting treasures, you, you find stuff, you level mm -hmm. up. So we gotta go that way. Real quick, I'm gonna go buy the upgrade suit, okay. and we can see how that animation works. Again, like, it's all in-world, and it's just mm -hmm. really awesome. And Instead like, of a merchant, you have these little store shops. But yeah, again, you jump into it, and that's really cool. The UI, you can, like, rotate your camera and flick it around. And which makes sense, because, like, of course, like, the Ishimaru would have shops like this because yeah. it's a giant, huge space station that has to support a lot of people, so it doesn't feel forced. Yeah, 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 it's just like a vending machine. And it's I remember so when I first played this game, I thought this was so cool. Hell yeah. Yeah, this, this came out around, like, the same time Bioshock 1 came out, and both of them did so well, just, like, fleshing out their worlds, like... <clears throat> Like, just the design of it, and even all these little choices. Bioshock also had, like, a vending machine. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just really, really, just really cool style on top of really fun gameplay. Bioshock also has, like, magic abilities on top of gunplay. Yeah, again, just, like, little touches to, like, elevate everything. And 
one thing that Dead Space does so well that I don't think it gets enough credit for is it's so immersive because the sound design is amazing. Like, mm -hmm. there's so many creaks and, like, screams happening. And when there's tons of enemies coming at you, the music really swells and gets intense. Yeah, and so the, the enemy AI in this game is amazing because they do a really great job of surrounding you constantly. Because in, like, Resident Evil 4, if there's, like, one thing you can say about it is enemies run at you in kind of a straight line mm -hmm. for the most part. Dead Space, they like go off in different directions. They be like they always come from behind. You always have to be on edge. Um, so like it's always intense. I picked up flame rounds. I don't want those because I don't have a flamethrower. Oh yeah, well, getting all the loot, and all mm -hmm. the ammo storing up. But yeah. again, like there'll be hairy, there'll be hairy firefights. We have to uh, unload all your ammo. All right, where do you go now? One thing I do appreciate is the game has like a. You can mm -hmm. drop your waypoint down to find out where you want to go. Yeah, and again, it's like again in world, it's just a little pointer he has. Mm -hmm. And this right here is an upgrade I point. I remember the first game I really noticed that was in uh, Perfect Dark Zero. But the reason they had to do that is because Perfect Dark Zero sucked so much that people couldn't read the level design. Yeah. So they had to add, like, if you got lost, these arrow points would show up. Um, and again, it's not, like, automatically or it's just if you want it. I'm someone I kind of like to burn through games fast. So it's like mm -hmm. I, I would kind of spam the game a lot. But you don't need to. You, you can still know where to go. There's upgrade paths, which I really love. And I'm always a sucker for that kind of stuff. I love this upgrade path because you have to make choices of yeah. like which path you want to go down. What do you want first? Yeah. And do you have to like in order to get health points, I have to waste two to get yeah. there. And uh, yeah, like any kind of choice progression system where you can like I feel like a lot of progression systems nowadays are like hey here's one path and yeah. when you get this many XP points you're gonna pick this one. Or it's thing. very it's like too linear like all right you want to be the shotgun guy here's the shotgun yeah. tree have fun you know or you want to be the magic guy. it's just like it kind of gives the illusion choice. If that's a tough thing is I'm someone who I do like XP, I do like level up systems, but then games every like you know, even like Horizon Zero Dawn, every game has like a XP system now, just kind of a given, but it's like oh it's not really changing my experience. No. And like the upgrades feel very minimal, and again you're kind of forced down certain paths where yeah. I love in this game where it's like you can't upgrade everything. So you have like, oh do I wanna upgrade the health? Do I wanna upgrade my damage or do I wanna upgrade a different gun? And again, it's just survival horror in general. In general, trying to make you give those choices. Another sci-fi game that did that great was a uh, Prey, which also which came out this year. And that was a game where it's like you have so many choices. What do you want to do? What do you want to upgrade? And it's like if you upgrade one thing, this part will be way easier, but then this part will be different. And it forces you kind of like live with your choices, but also evolve and adapt with them. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yes. Yeah, so now we're getting deeper into it. Now it's getting a little darker. It get a little grimier. We just I heard a thought, scream. I always thought these uh, crates you smash open look like Xboxes. <laughs> Me too, actually. <laughs> Yeah, and playing this on the PS3. He's a little, he's console warrior. Oh, yeah, I wonder if you play the uh, P if you play the 360 version if you step on PS3s. Yeah. I would like to have that. Let's let's do that. So you're getting like schematics on how to craft weapons. So there's a very simple like crafting system in the game. I oh, was, yeah, look how dungy and yeah. dirty this is. Oh yeah. Oh. oh. Okay, so here's the thing you can shoot off their limbs. You can smash the Xbox in the corner. Oh, another, uh, we talked early in Resident Evil 4 about how, like, the game makes you rethink headshots because of the parasites. Yeah. What this game does well is that there's, in every horror game, there's dead bodies everywhere. But they introduce an enemy that can re, like, kind of reanimate dead yeah. bodies. But if you cut off all the limbs of a dead body, it can no longer reanimate it. Oh, nice. So it comes this, like, game of, like, every time you see a dead body, you're like, oh, I should probably stomp the head off. That's what, like, uh, the Resident Evil remake, they added a system called Cri uh, Crimson Heads. So if you shoot zombies down, you can do that, but they'll come back as Crimson Heads. So you either mm -hmm. have to blow their heads off, burn the bodies, or just avoid the zombies entirely. Again, I just like these little choices where you can have the easy way out now, but if you're not careful, later on you're screwed. Oh man, these little like baby things. He's dead. Is it Dead Space One or Dead Space Two? I think it's Dead Space Two. My favorite moment from this whole series is uh, you're going through like the daycare. Oh, well, that's that, a really good level. Is that Dead Space Two? Yes. That. Oh my God, that's awesome. Again, I, it's just like so freaky. I think Dead Space Two is overall a weaker game than Dead Space One, um, but the two levels in that game are great. Is the daycare level, and then there's a level where you have to go back to the ship and like get something off the ship and it there's no combat mm -hmm. in it but it's so terrifying so what exactly are the enemies in this game are they aliens are they parasites or are they ghosts that is part of the story that okay. maybe i don't want to spoil okay. but you come to the ship and all you know is that the dead people are becoming these necromorphs and there's this one necromorph that can turn dead bodies into necromorphs and you have no idea what they are uh, you have no idea where they come from and part of the story is figuring out where exactly they came from and again like Thinking that yourself and the ending to this game is a little more subtle than mm -hmm. most games. But then in Dead Space 2, you get like all these answers and there's even like a whole like religious cult around Hell the yeah, necromorphs and all that. Places. That's right. Okay, yeah, I really do like Dead Space 2. And uh, I just I just don't think it's that scary or interesting. It's like I'd rather just 
be lost in like trying to figure things out than like everything being spelled out for me. Yeah, now I know in Dead Space 1, uh, they're similar to Half-Life, uh, like Gordon Freeman, you're a silent protagonist. Mm -hmm. uh, does the later Dead Space games give him a voice? <gasps> Big boy. Cause that's something I like, I find annoying. Like even like uh, Grand Theft Auto 3, you have a silent antagonist. Thankfully, like they added really good voice actors down the line, but it's always an interesting choice when series decide to do that. Does Dead Space 2 or 3 give your character a voice? Yes, he is voiced in both Dead Space 1 and 2, and okay. he is the most generic, uh, okay. mil like not military, but he's just a, just, yeah. he's just very generic. And I feel like as a silent protagonist, again, adding to the immersion. Yeah, it like, puts you as the player, yeah. He one, just grunts. One thing I don't like in video games where the player talks is when it's a very bro -y character. Like, yeah. yeah, eat that, you dickbag. It's like, I would never say that. That's so douchey. I don't like my main character. But when you're a silent protagonist, it's like, okay, I'm mm -hmm. like calm and rational. Like, can you imagine if Half-Life and Go if Half Life and Gordon called, like, I don't know. Yeah, and also, it's, like, yeah. for most of this game, it kind of makes sense because he's a silent protagonist because you're alone. Yep, yep. You wouldn't be talking. There's no quips. There's no partners. It's just, like, I am stressed. Like, I need to save my wife. It's a quiet mission of vengeance. Yeah, he's not going to be sitting here like, ooh, man, shot that guy in the face. Yeah. Um... But in Dead Space 2, like, he's just a generic guy. But then in Dead Space 3, they give you a bro character as your partner. Oh, great. And he's like, let's get it, man. And Ew. it's just, it just sucks. That's EA for you. Oh, I forgot. I might die. Really? Wait. I forgot where I had to go. Okay, okay good. If good. you don't freeze that thing, you might die. But we're good. So Dead Space 1, it's kind of subtle, more survival horror. Dead Space 2 adds some action, but I'm still a fan. Dead Space 1, this, what, what exactly the setting? Is this this giant spaceship? It's this giant spaceship, and you do a little bit of backtracking, yeah. and the whole spaceship kind of looks like this. So I understand why people yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah. It can get a little dry sometimes, but I personally love how dirty and grungy it is. But if it's not your thing, I can understand it getting a little dull. Whereas Dead Space 2 takes place on pretty much a giant planet ship. And so there's malls, there key, there's daycares. Yeah, there a lot, that's why I like yeah, Dead Space 2 Yeah, so more. it's very, it's a lot more colorful. It's got a huge environment. Um, but again, I kind of like the simplicity and subtlety of this game. Mm -hmm. I compare Dead Space 1 is Alien, and then Dead Space 2 is Aliens. Yeah, totally. So it kind of, it's like, take your preference, whichever one you like. And then... Um, Dead, so with Dead Space 2, you're going to malls. Are you going to Earth, or are you just going to a bigger spaceship that's like a, a, a populated area? It's just a bigger spaceship. Okay. You start there. Awesome. And Dead Space uh, 3, I think you start on Earth or some planet. Don't you go to like a snow planet or something? Yeah, that's like the other half of the game, which I didn't like, yeah, Dead sucks. Space 3 wasn't good. It sucks. It's not good. That's why you mentioned Alien and Aliens. Uh, John Carpenter is a huge fan of Dead Space. I follow John Carpenter on Twitter. He doesn't tweet much, only when like his new album's coming out or something. But like now that he's kind of retired from filmmaking, he just plays video games and makes music with his son. Mm -hmm. So every once in a while, he'll post something like, "Ah, oh, Dead Space was fantastic, visceral, horrific. Loved it. Would like to make the movie." Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's like I, I thought. So like, I really like seeing that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, Dead Space Three. Exactly what happens? Um, I know. Didn't they made it like a co-op game too? Like what? It's all co-op, and even when we played solo, like when you have to climb a mountain there's two things uh, like they don't even attempt to make it not yeah. that it's also like 20 hours long it it's is so it long there's this horrible love triangle story yeah, in the I game know. where it's just like again it, they just pack it filled with stuff there's they try to hit every trope yeah. yeah there's there's a ton of microtransactions as well it's just it got ea'd yeah like that's the it and, got ea'd yeah it got ea'd he like, got ea'd because yeah, dead space isn't the only series where that's happening i mean like my favorite ea series i mean i guess technically i don't really like ea games but my favorite game of this of this of the previous generation was ea skate mm -hmm. ea as a huge tony hawk fan ea skate one was phenomenal and then ea skate two they perfected it oh my god skate two i played forever and then Skate 3 came out and i played it and it was like oh this is okay but yeah they added just too much yeah. to it like in, e in, EA, in Skate 1 or 2, naturally, it was just funny. If you bailed, oh my god, the physics were great, you can rewind it. EA Skate 3, they added a whole separate career path that's just doing bails and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you're leaning way too much into stuff that I don't care about. And it kind of wrecked it. They also added, like, different difficulty modes. You can change the physics on the fly. And it was just like, you're, you're trying to appeal to everybody, and this isn't working. With Dead Space 1, you're hitting survival horror. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. By the end of Dead Space 3, oh, let's add co-op. Let's make it easy. Ooh, you go, it's like, they try to add so much to it. They kind of like, they make it really vanilla and they lose the original charm of it. And also, it's important to note, like, Dead Space 2, uh, I forget which level I have to go. Let's go level 3. Um, but Dead Space 2, they like kind of uncharted it a little bit. Like, there's a, part, a lot of parts in Dead Space 2 where you're walking down a hallway, then everything explodes, Hell you're yeah. getting sucked out the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And that's really cool, but for me, what I loved about Dead Space 1 is it's subtle, it's quiet, yeah. it's scary, it's 
brooding. It's still in the in the in the world of survival horror. Yeah, whereas the Dead Space 2 is still a very good game. I don't want to say here it's like not a very good game, but it just again got away from what Dead Space 1 like made it so great. And then Dead Space 3 again is just yeah. over bloated and stuff. <laughs> Uh, and then the other game that EA kind of killed was, uh, well, actually, what, what, like, what's your take on Mirror's Edge? Because Mirror's Edge 1 was also good from that era, but then Mirror's Edge Catalyst didn't really hit. Yeah, I like both of, like, I'm a giant Mirror's Edge fan, so it's hard for me to talk about it because I'm a fanboy. Like, no matter what, I was going to like the new Mirror's Edge yeah. game. But Mirror's Edge 2 doesn't go, it's like, it's like 80% there. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, you were so close to making the perfect Mirror's Edge game, and you just flubbed it here and here. Yeah. And one of the reasons why it did flub it is, again, they put it in the open world, which oh, I'm... okay, I, trying to hit that, yeah. But I'm fine with, because it's like, oh, I'm a runner. I'm yeah. running from rooftop to rooftop. That's really cool. But then they fill it with all these pointless side missions and activities yeah. and races. And again, it's just like, you just overdid this. Yeah, EA it sucks because it's like, they're a AAA publisher. They have so much money. They make so much money off their sports games that, like, they make these really big, bloated AAA games with huge budgets, but nothing appeals to me. I, like, yeah. don't... Like, EA has their whole press conference, and I don't care about anything. Like, even Star Wars Battlefront, like, I don't care. No, I don't care The at only all. game uh, recently that EA showed off that looked cool was uh, A Way Out. That which looks is awesome. by the guy who made Brother A Tale of Two Sons or whatever. But, like, again, that's a small indie game. They let this director do what he wants. All of their big titles, like Need for Speed, it's just like, I don't care about any of this. Well, like, it's like, all their games are all really well made, polished, yeah. look good, but they feel, they're like, I don't want to harp on this, but they feel like modern, like, Marvel movies. Like, they're good, yeah. they're fine, but it's just very generic. It's, it's very a vanilla. It's very broad audience, very yeah. safe, where it's like, oh, you buy this one game for your kids, you don't need to buy them anything else, because yeah. they got everything in one bag. It's just, if you're a sports fan, then, like, you know, they're making that thing for you, too, but it's like, yeah, any of their other properties, it just... I just don't hit like even like Dragon Age or like even the newer Mass Effects. It's like yeah, what the hell happened? You yeah. know, they just they they've blown it. But a way out does look good, and you know can't forget EA Sports. It's in the game. That headline, just, that tagline part. It's in the game. All right. Oh yeah, this part's cool because aren't can't can't like aliens fly off like yeah. these gravity sections? But again, look at this like great setting. It's all dark and brilliant, and immediately all these dead bodies everywhere, and it's like something's gonna happen. Can you here. pick up dead bodies and throw them around? Yeah, man. Hell of yeah, course. put them in there. So that's something I would love. When games first introduced physics engines, I was blown away. I think the first one that really hit for me was Max Payne 2. Oh, I remember that. Like, it, like Something Awful had like an article that was called Asshole Physics, which was just a dumb joking thing, but it was just like knocking chairs around in Counter-Strike, like shooting the keyboards in the, in the CS office. Like I just, I liked having that control over the environment where I can just dick around and have fun by goofing off in ways that weren't really intentional. And that's also why I really like EA Skate, is you have this giant world where the physics is just you and the skateboard, but you can really play around. And then again, even with Dead Space, allowing you to pick up items and shoot it out, off at people is fun too. And it, it just makes you feel like more connected with the yeah, world because you're you actively with engaging it. with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you've, you've, you've played these games a lot. Have you gotten like the platinum trophies on these? I've gotten the platinum trophy on Dead Space 1. I am missing one trophy in Dead Space 2, which is beating it in Hardcore because yeah. I died on the final level. So is it, what's the deal with Hardcore? Is, it, is, is Hardcore in this game also? No, Hardcore is only in Dead Space 2. I don't know, but I didn't care about doing anything in 3, so I didn't yeah. look it up. But in Dead Space 2, Hardcore is the hardest difficulty, which I beat. But then on top of that, you only have three saves, uh, and when you die, you get resorted back to your last and save. And like Dead Space 2 is like, what, a 12-hour game? Yeah. So, you have to, oh. so I, I, I messed up my saves. I saved too early, and I... There is a thing in here. Here we go. So because I killed those dead bodies, these guys, this guy has nothing to do. Oh, those will like invade yeah. the hosts. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, it's very much like Half-Life with the head grabs. Yeah, and also they're just terrifying looking. But yeah, I messed up my saves, and so I lost like three hours of progress, and I was so close to the end of the game, I was just like, you know what? I'm just not going to do this again. And so I don't think I'll ever go back to it. But Dead Space 1, I beat on impossible mode, and as a challenge to myself, there's a trophy for in this game for beating the game with only using the plasma cutter oh, and not using any other weapons awesome. and so i did that on impossible and the, and the one thing to give, give, give credit to the game is the plasma cutter is still a really fun item to use oh i love it it's my favorite weapon in the game and like i only have one other weapon even though i can buy all the other ones like, yeah i i just like the plasma cutter it's, yeah it's it, good it's durable it does its job it feels really good to shoot are there uh, zero gravity sections in this game yes and if there's one thing you like that I don't even don't like about this game is zero gravity sections aren't that fun like the one we just did where all the air gets sucked out yeah. is really cool because all the sound goes away it feels really immersive but the other ones you have to like 
jump from wall to wall, and it's really awkward and kind of hard to control. Whereas in Dead Space 2, they gave you free-flying combat, where uh, you can okay. kind of float around. Yeah. So that is way better in Dead Space Zero 2. Zero gravity sections, like, for the sound design, sound, sound design is really cool. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of nauseating to play, because, like, Prey, also from this year, is, like, you don't yeah. really have an access to set yourself on. You're just going full 360, and it's, like, getting your sense of direction is really hard. In yeah, and w like when you first go out there, it's like, okay, I know what to do, but the moment you kind of mess it up, it's like, oh, I'm I'm lost. I don't yeah. know what to do. It's funny, like, playing this compared to, like, the last Dead Space I played, which was Dead Space 3, is like, yeah, this is quiet and isolated. You're just exploring yeah. the environment. It also reminds me of, like, Doom 3, uh, which is the same thing. You're in the space station, kind of quiet and, like, you're poking around. Oh, here's some. Here's oh, this some guy's really cool. So, this guy, if you shoot him in the belly, a bunch of babies will come out of them, and you have to fight the babies. Even just, the design of that's awesome. Oh, it's just so, gross. Yeah, it's gross and cool. This is a lot. Better. I mean, yeah, this does remind me of Doom. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, there's physics Whoa. freaking out. Yeah. Um, also, one cool thing to note is to get the inspiration for the Necromorphs, they looked at car crash victims. Oh, jeez. So they looked at people whose bodies have been torn apart, like just brutalized, and that's how they came up with the designs for the Necromorphs. I was gonna say that sounds very like 90s, like almost like a fake rumor to get people to buy the game, but then I remember Dead Space 2 or 3 actually leaned into that. Didn't they have a, a marketing campaign that was like, we showed these moms Dead oh, Space? Oh, yeah, yeah, and it was, it was real bad. Was that Dead Space 2 or yeah, 3? Yeah, it was Dead Space 2. Jesus. And it was just like, they couldn't handle it. Hey, I do appreciate that late 90s attitude. Smash that Xbox. Uh, can you smash likes in this game? Is it possible to smash that? Smash is, that like. Is there a like button that you can smash? Um, I don't think so. Maybe oh. later on. I mean, I haven't. You know, it's been a while since I played okay, it. Okay, we gotta find the smash button and like it. Let's find the like button and smash it. There, there. Yeah, like I love like hallways like this. Like it's just. Yeah, like, when you first play this game, cool. like, you're afraid to go to that other door. It's like, I don't know what's gonna <laughs> pop out at me. Yeah, it's true, because Bruce is, like, well-versed in this game. He's played it a ton, so he knows kind of what to do. And then, uh, this is something I wasn't aware of when I was, uh, like, playing this game, because I was a, a teenager, but, uh, you take note of it now. You go into so many elevators, like, oh, I'm loading? Loading in the background? Yeah, yeah. Like, so much loading, but you don't think about it when yeah. you first play it. Well, I mean, like, that was such a jump from, like, PS2 to PS3 era. It was like, you know, PS2 would be, like, these ugly loading screens. And now games got to the point where everything is hidden. And yeah. it's like, okay, cool. And now games are so massive and they full in fully install that we don't really have to worry about loading screens anymore. For some games. Oh, uh, here's the zero graph section Hell perfectly. Yeah. So we can kind of show this off and then we can call it. But um, this is one of the aspects of the game that does has an age super well. Hell yeah, I remember this stuff. I remember this section. Yeah, so there's like a thing coming up. And we have to just stay here and chill. Otherwise, we'll die. Oh, uh, okay. All yeah, right. so this thing's. Oh, yeah, here's the up. sound. The sound goes. I love yeah, that. Yeah, it just sounds so sounds. good. The first game I really noticed that. Oh, was, whoa, gnarly. Oh, look at the physics. Hell yeah, that's super cool. There I go. I really liked in uh, Mass Effect 2 when the game starts and that ship's blown apart. Mm -hmm. Like, that blew me away with its sound design. This is another cool thing is I think all the loading screens are really cool. They yeah. all very feel very in world. It's very Ridley Scott like like Alien. Mm -hmm. All right, bottom frag and Bruce. Uh, hey, died you know, it's been a while. Reset. Oh yeah, on the back you have your timer on how much air you can breathe or whatever. Yeah, again, all the AI uh, AI UI yeah. choices in this game are just just genius. Although the only thing I can say is like as a as a world building thing, that timer on the back means nothing to Isaac because he can't see it. <laughs> But, you know, for the player, for the player, it's hey, great. Hey, it's if he's out there in the mining yeah. field and someone notices it. He's like, hey, man. Uh, hey, uh, Isaac. There. Oh, my God. That'd also be a really good joke. Kind of how people today be like, hey, there's a spider on your back. What? Oh, just kidding. <laughs> hey, Isaac, you got 10 seconds left. What? <laughs> oh, no, you're good. I'm just, nah. I'm just saying. Yo, I'm just playing. He's got a nice butt, though. He's very, very fit. He's very, I feel he's like a, a minor. minor dude. Oh, yeah, he works hard. But I also feel like if it was like a truck driver in that outfit, yeah. it'd be a different story. So, yeah, yeah this, this is how you traverse these. And it's like kind of fun, but. Again, it, it's like a little disorienting. Yeah, and then you get to hear. This looks cool. So what, is this like the ship's defense system, or what's like preventing you from just We are uh, in the middle of an asteroid field. When you uh, first get to the ship, it's like very hard to get to because it's in the middle of an so asteroid field. So what happens field. once your timer runs out? Uh, you die. You run out of air. You die. Oh, you get, you get the oxygen. Yeah, okay, I so got oxygen. I'm cool. Attention. I'm chill. I like. It's very crude that the, the, the timer starts at 69 seconds. Hey, man. There's a little, little inside jokes all over <laughs> Little inside jokes in space. Right. How, yeah, all the sounds. How long great. is this game? Because you're on like level four right now. Yeah, I'm level four. This is like two hours in. I would say this game is roughly about maybe mm. eight to twelve hours. It depends on if you get stuck on yeah. certain parts. 
Um, but it's like roughly the same length as like a Resident Evil 4. See, I appreciate it. Nice, nice and tight. Still, and you still like, because it's such a good experience to get your money's worth. Yeah. Um, I mean, now, if you've never played these games, they're, you know, cheap as hell. One thing that kind of sucks, though, is they haven't put a, a Dead Space, like, they haven't, like, done a PS4 remaster. Like, not every game needs to be triple remastered, but it's like, I'm kind of surprised they haven't, like, done, like, a trilogy remaster. Or yeah, something. because I feel like Dead Space defined survival horror last generation, mm -hmm. kind of like how Resident Evil defined yeah, it yeah, yeah. for the next generation. And that's, these games, besides 3, still hold up so well. But even if 3 was in a pack, yeah, like, I would it. still play all... Like, I would still love to play these yeah. games. Because, like, these games, like, as you've seen throughout this video, it has a little bit of frame rate issues here and yeah. there. Like, if it was cleaned up a tad bit, it would be great. Um, for this next part, you have to sit here and shoot a bunch of asteroids. It's not that interesting. Oh, that part's lame as well. So, I think this is actually a really good stopping point. All right, hey, sit, sit down the asteroid boat. We'll go, we'll All right, go. well, let me, I'll save, I'll save my game. I like it because it reminds me of, like, the Millennium Falcon with, you know, Luke and them. I will say, stuff. I beat this game on Impossible. Yeah. This is the hardest part on Impossible. Mm -hmm. The hardest part is this shooting the asteroids. It sucks. We'll shoot the asteroids just to show how lame the sequence is because I have one question. Um, so Dead Space, here's the thing that I think that the reason Dead Space 3 w what was doomed to fail Mostly in franchises, especially in movies, you start and then by like the tenth iteration you go to space. Mm -hmm. How do you improve a sequel once you're already yeah. in space? You know what I mean? It's just like like even Air Bud. Okay, you start playing basketball, you play soccer. Oh, now we got space buddies. Mm -hmm. So maybe Isaac needs to join a basketball team. Yeah, or basketball. He has to like go back like space to Earth. Jam. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he's already in space, so maybe he just needs to join like the Chicago Bulls. So I think that's the reason why Dead Space 3 wasn't working is you were already in space. You can't go to space twice. No. So, I mean, they get, the beginning of Dead Space 3 is kind of cool when you're space hopping, even though the story sucks yeah. during that part, but every oh man. Yeah, this section isn't that impressive. No, it's <laughs> this this part. Is... I do like that you got your Wi-Fi signal down there, so you know, at least they were Yeah, I'm protecting the Wi-Fi. If it goes down, you know, this is the, might yeah, as well be dead. Jesus. Yeah, don't let anything don't let anyone hit your router connection. All right, we're gonna let Isaac defend the base from the asteroids. Gonna be shooting him up. We ain't got time to watch all hey, that. He'll be there all day. But Dead Space came out in 2008. We played the PS3 version. It's also on 360. It was a good game. Mm -hmm. I'm not as much of a fan of it as Bruce is, but talk about it. I Dead Space One, like I said, one of my favorite games of the last generation. Even just, I feel like the cover says the everything. Severed floating. It's just pool. a. It's very subtle. Yeah. Quiet horror game. If you're a fan of survival horror games, you would love it. Dead Space Two is also very good. Yeah, I, I'm. A, I'm. A, I like Dead Space Two even more. So I really do like. Dead yeah, Space. it's like a little bit more bombastic, but again, very more like a lot more accessible. Yeah, and if you're a fan of Resident Evil Four and you just want more of kind of the same but in space, like it's you know it's it's still pretty good. The graphics are a little crusty on yeah. PS3. Uh, you know, it, it's it's only at 720p, 30 frames. I don't even think it hits 30 frames. No. It... But like beyond that, it's still a good game. Um, not I didn't I played it a few years later, so I, I just give it a thumbs up. Uh, I'm gonna give it two thumbs up. And one important thing to also mention is Dead Space One and Two are backwards compatible on Xbox One. Oh wow! Okay. So That'd it would be probably awesome. like clean it up a yeah, little totally. bit. I haven't seen it, but it would probably clean it up. Yeah. So if you have an Xbox One, definitely and check it out. And you can get out. those games super cheap on like Amazon or GameStop used. So yeah, yeah it's like five I recommend bucks. that uh, Dead Space, good game. Also, be sure to keep sending us emails to appcomputershow at gmail.com. We did get a quick email from Aaron asking us about H.P. Lovecraft because we played Resident Evil and mentioned mm -hmm. Stephen King in our sh in short stories. I haven't read any H.P. Lovecraft. Um, I've right. seen I've seen a uh, Reanimator. I know it was inspired. That. Um, but yeah, C hey Cthulhu, Bloodborne. I, I know I know those are things. I know yeah. he's influenced. Uh, I'm a huge Stephen King fan. I know he inspired a lot, but I haven't read any H.P. Lovecraft. I'm just always one of those kinds of people. I'm afraid to read anything too old. Yeah. You know, like, I, I know I'm not as, like, well-versed in literature. But people in the comments, let us know where to start with H.P. Lovecraft. What's your favorite story? I know there's dope stuff. Stephen King never shuts up. Mm -hmm. Another nerd out there with glasses. Yo, yo, hey, that's us, man. We got to share our knowledge. <laughs> um, anyways, thanks for watching. We'll be back with more Fright Fest. Don't get too scared now. At the computer.